CPM and CPCs are going completely crazy on Facebook. It's not just you, okay? So Facebook already said, Meta released a report that they're making some changes and this year it's gonna jump over 20 to 30%. I have personally seen a poll inside one of the smaller, smaller uh, DTC e-com groups. People are saying that they see crazy numbers in terms of CPM. So let's have an kind of like open discussion, even though I'm the only person who actually speaks here in this video about CPC and CPMs. Okay, so the old way of looking at things is that, you know, at the end of the day, you need a lot of clicks and you need good quality clicks. And we know that Facebook is a premium type of like platform that delivers good uh, audience. And then you also want to get like a lot of impressions and see low CPC because you are potentially into e-com or uh, you're selling on Amazon or another um, platform and you want to get what uh, my friend calls the Spielberg, which is basically the traffic that comes from people searching on Google or Amazon for your product and then you get more sales over there, which is AKA the halo effect. Very hard to um, measure this stuff in terms of attribution. So that's the old way of looking at things. The, the newer way is people who basically jumped in um, in the last five years, they almost don't look at CPCs at the moment. All they care about is CPA. So if they're on target CPA, that's amazing. Uh, in, in real life, just like a lot of things, the truth is somewhere in the middle and you want to have like a good CPC um, because of a few things. The first thing is the, uh, the thing that I just mentioned, the halo effect. You have to take that in, into consideration when calculating the whole economics of things. But... Um, there is a, another reason, which is the scalability and stability of a campaign. When a campaign is delivering on low CPCs, it is more likely to scale, it is more likely to scale profitably, and it is more likely to stay stable throughout the year, especially if you want it as an evergreen campaign that keeps on printing money and bringing in the audience that you want. So that's one way of looking at things. but. The other way goes in terms of like old approach versus new approach as to what really affects the CPC. So lots of people are trying to get lower CPCs, lower CPMs, and their go-to place usually is where they have the most impact and the most flexibility, which is the creatives. Some of them are trying to do like different, you know, testing on top, which is images versus videos. Some are more technical and they have like a video where they try to, um, it's a bit blurry, I'm sorry. Um, and, and they're trying to um, do a shorter video versus a longer video. And some are just trying to change the script and try, trying to do like, you know, different music, different actors and stuff like that. At the end of the day, it's a combination of everything. And the thing that people are missing the most when they want to go and get lower CPCs and lower CPMs is the landing page. Okay, so Facebook is very much like Google. They are looking for their customers to have the best experience that they can. Okay, so I don't know if you ever tried that. For those of you who are running something that is very reliant on CPCs, something like search or content arbitrage, you can see that you can run an e-com product. And then if you launch the same campaign with the same exact creative, same geo, same targeting exactly, but you're going to send people into a search arb landing page. So the original campaign in my example would be an e-com campaign and the second one would be a search results page. You're going to see that here you're getting two, three, four, five, six dollar CPCs and here you're gonna get way lower, like under one dollar, probably under half a dollar, even for like United States geos and stuff like that. And the reason is that the main driver in this, in this case would be the landing page. So you want something that loads quick, you want something that has some content, uh, not just a video, text, something that Facebook could actually see that provides value, but not just provide value, you know, just like in Google, if you rent search, you want, Google wants to see the holy triangle, which is the connection between the ad, the search query, and the, the search term that you are targeting, basically. So Facebook is very much the same. It wants to see a connection between the ad, the product that it categorized you in, 
and the actual value that you provide inside. So if it actually measures the price, it sees what you're selling the product for, it sees how many people get inside, what's the experience, are people bouncing from your page and stuff like that, what's, you know, how many, how much people are like scrolling inside page. Uh, if you have the pixel, then basically it's an AI that builds like a heat map. So Facebook is collecting all of that data. And again, creative is a very big part to it. But for me, as like someone who's like more tactical, more technical, I always like to see and look at, uh, you know, the, the, the main how to kind of like, I don't want to say growth hacking, but it, this is like looking at the main driver, what really changes. And for, for me, it hasn't been creatives. For me, it was going with what the algorithm looks at and how the algorithm makes changes and, and does things differently. So let me know in the comments below if, if you're on my YouTube channel or if this is posted on somewhere on social media. Let me know what you think regarding CPCs and CPMs. If you have every, any example of like an A-B test that you've done or how you manage to lower CPCs or CPMs, especially in Q4. Thank you for watching this video.